Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Espes Nostra Salve. A te clamamus, exules filii eve, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hoc lacrimarum vale. He was a secular priest caught up in the maelstrom of the French Revolution of 1789. After narrow and numerous escapes during the Reign of Terror, Father William Joseph Chaminade fled to Spain and persevered. There, in Saragossa, meditating at the shrine of Our Lady of the Pillar, he received inspiration to reestablish Christianity in his native France. He would create a unique movement that was originally comprised of ordinary people, citizens of all classes and professions men and women living the principles of Christianity, interacting in community, and evangelizing through example. Father Chaminade was building on something that was in his background before the revolution, and it became a great tool after the revolution to reestablish the church. The great thing about Father Chaminade was that uh, instead of being um, consumed, destroyed by what he had seen, uh, he created something new out of what he had seen. He, he borrowed from what he had seen in the revolution and, and he created a tradition. It is in these times of desolation when the generation just born is threatened with extinction because of religious indifference and impiety that God has founded the Institute of Mary. God calls us not only to be holy ourselves, but to go out to restore the faith in France, in Europe, in the entire world. What a tremendous undertaking. It is holy. It is challenging. Father Chaminade was also a revolutionary, a visionary who adapted the principles of democracy espoused by the French Revolution and applied them to a lay movement that eventually expanded to include the priests and brothers of the Society of Mary and the sisters of the Daughters of Mary Immaculate. Above all, education would be the key to reintroducing Catholic values into the secular society created by the French Revolution. He and two impressive colleagues, Mother Adèle de Bats de Trinquillon and Marie-Thérèse Chalotte de Lamerou, formulated this movement, calling it the Family of Mary which later became known as the Marianist family, or simply the Marianists. The Marianists, even the vow of Marianists, uh, really looked to the lay community as a resource and a really strong, uh, I think, powerful entity of the entire Marianist community. One of the unique aspects of the Marianist charism is a sense of compassion, the recognition of God in every person. The greater focus of the Marianist community, which is to create a world that we want to live in, the real commitment to social justice, which is something that's a real draw to me, and justice in all things, with all people all over the world. Today, the Marianists are in six continents and almost 40 countries. Its history and influence runs deep throughout the world. No more so, than in Hawaii. On September 3rd, 1883, eight Marianist brothers from Dayton, Ohio, disembarked from the SS Mariposa in Honolulu Harbor. On this day, a mass of aloha was celebrated by Sacred Heart's father, Damien de Vister, an auspicious welcome to the new faculty of St. Louis College. The original St. Louis School began in 1846 when King Kamehameha III granted a 216-acre parcel of land in Windward Oahu called Ahuimanu, a cluster of birds. 
run by the Sacred Hearts Fathers, the school was first called the College of Ahuimanu. By 1880, the school had outgrown the campus and there was a push to relocate to bustling downtown Honolulu. The secular priest, Father Larkin, led the drive by securing land next to Washington Place, home of then Princess Lili Uokalani. The school was renamed College of St. Louis and Hawaiian Commercial and Business Academy after the patron saint of the bishop. A building collapse on the site of the new school stopped the school's progress. And so, the arrival of the Marianist brothers to administer St. Louis College on its third site, located on four acres of land on the Eva Bank of Nu'uana Stream, was indeed a new beginning. On September 5th, three of the eight brothers left for Maui to administer St. Anthony's School. They were greeted with what was described as exuberant joy by the people of Wailuku. They were treated with a great feast, a luau, with 200 invited guests. Such was the welcome of these brothers and the spiritual faith which they represented. From the very beginning, the Marianist mission in Hawaii worked together with the other religious orders, especially the Fathers of the Sacred Hearts, who first came to the islands in 1827. This cooperative effort was particularly true on Maui and the Big Island. On September 6, 1885, Brother Joseph Jell and two other brothers went to Hilo to take over St. Mary's School for Boys at Maria Keole, founded in 1875 by the Sacred Hearts Fathers. Nearby St. Joseph's School for Boys and Girls, founded in 1869, was another Sacred Hearts School. St. Mary's and St. Joseph's had a close relationship with the Marianists, with the brothers eventually teaching the high school boys at St. Joseph. Chinatown is in flames. The Board of Health orders it torched because of an outbreak of the bubonic plague. Brother Bertram grabs his camera and captures these images on the banks of Nu'uanu Stream, where St. Louis College stands. On that day, the school is spared from the flames. Brother Gabriel Bertram Bellinghausen was the first principal of St. Louis College. Charismatic, energetic, and possessing a keen intellect, he increased enrollment from 70 students when he first arrived in 1883 to 700 when he left in 1905. He instilled in his students a dedication to the principles of personal honesty and discipline. His boundless enthusiasm extended to photography. These old plates show that he was a skilled photographer. He was also a musician who encouraged the St. Louis band to excel. Often, they would play side by side with the Royal Hawaiian Band in open air concerts. His relationship with the Hawaiian royalty was more than cordial, and his friendship with King Kalakaua was legend. On a first name basis, he would invite the king to attend functions at St. Louis College, concerts, plays, and student military reviews. Brother Bertram's legacy in Hawaii goes beyond the building named after him. Under his direction, St. Louis College was acknowledged as one of the finest schools in the kingdom. His continuing legacy is the St. Louis Alumni Association, which he initiated. After 1905, under the steady leadership of Brother Henry Ernst, who succeeded Brother Bertram, St. Louis College grew and flourished. Along with Christian doctrine, the curriculum was expanded to include high school courses that reflected a preparatory academy, courses in the humanities, sciences, and business. The quality of education at St. Louis was so highly respected that uh, many of the governmental agencies and the uh, people who were working in the territory at the time uh, were graduates of the school. The advertiser and many of the newspapers uh, were highly complimentary of the education that the students got. In 1921, when Brother Adolf Eiben became principal of the school, there were over 1,000 students enrolled at St. Louis College. The school's reputation for providing quality education had grown, and so did the student population. 
the campus was bursting at the seams and Brother Iben needed to build a new school. One September day in 1922, Brother Frank Harold, one of the original eight brothers from Dayton, Ohio, walked into a downtown frame shop. For years, Brother Frank delighted in painting Hawaiian scenes, and today was the day he would have them framed. It so happened that in the shop was W.O. Smith, the chairman of the Bernice Poahi Bishop Estate. The casual meeting was fortuitous. Brother Iben had been searching for a suitable site for the new school, and a prime location overlooking Kaimuki was the slopes of Kalaipohaku, which was owned by Bishop Estate. So when Brother Frank mentioned he had met W.O. Smith, Brother Iben was elated. On January 27, 1923, trustees of the Bishop Estate signed over 205 acres to St. Louis College for $62,500. At midnight, December 7, 1941, the military governor commandeered St. Louis College. Brother Paul Sibbing, head of the college at the time, along with his fellow brothers, students, and citizen volunteers, cleared the building of all desks and other materials. In three days, St. Louis College was converted into Army headquarters and a hospital with operating tables. The brothers maintained the facility. St. Louis College served its purpose well, prompting a visit from President Roosevelt himself during his tour of the Pacific Front. The brothers and the students participated in the war effort. The students cultivated victory gardens, did cafeteria and janitorial work, and, in the pineapple fields, took the place of men gone off to war. St. Patrick welcomed the elementary boys, and McKinley High School shared its campus with the high school boys during the course of the war. The latter relationship was not without tension, which was played out on the football field. Neil Blaisdell, St. Louis class of 21, who later became the mayor of Honolulu, was the coach of that era, several times winning the Poi Pounder Trophy, the symbol of that friendly rivalry. Under the scholastic leadership of Brother Frank Newbeck and assistant principal Brother James Whipfield, St. Louis College initiated business courses which prepared outstanding graduates for city and territorial offices. The desire for a Catholic university in the Pacific began during the 1930s. During the war years, uh, the thought of making St. Louis School a university school as well was put on hold because of the military occupation of the campus. And after uh, the war was completed, it took a, a, at least uh, 10 to 12 years uh, to be completed. St. Louis Junior College opened in September 1955. It was later renamed Chaminade College of Honolulu and expanded to a four-year liberal arts college in 1957. The Marianists in Hawaii have been uh, Trojans in the sense that they really heard Vatican II's call to work with uh, adult education. And so they began through uh, Father Mackey, especially with the Mackey Lectures, to uh, offer adults opportunities to grow in the faith. Father Robert Mackey was the first president of the college. Under his able leadership, he nurtured the college to evolve into one of the foremost Catholic universities in the Pacific. He, along with four other exceptional Marianist religious, formed what is affectionately known as the Five Founders. Catholic University is a university that, that believes that the role of faith uh, is essential in that pursuit of truth. Uh, obviously, reason is, is a part of that, that pursuit of truth. The Catholic University believes that the other great avenue uh, that, uh, for, the pursuit of, for the search for truth is, is the avenue of faith. Uh, they, they are, they're complementary. They, they, they go hand in hand. Father Chaminade's mission was to re-establish Christianity through education on all levels. St. Louis High School was about teaching me how to be a leader, 
a leader of soldiers, a leader of men, a leader not only of military, but also their families. Chaminade University taught me how to be a great business manager, more or less the managerial administrative aspects of uh, business as it relates to the military. So if you put those two together, St. Louis provided me a foundation of leadership and balance. Chaminade allowed me to understand the more technical side of life. Father Chaminade's vision of transforming a secular society lives on despite the dwindling number of religious. The genius of the Marianist family is that it also consists of the laity. Its members from the very beginning were ordinary men and women living extraordinary lives of faith and courage. When I became a student at Chaminade, I was very disenchanted with my experience growing up within the Catholic Church. One of the things that was really challenging for me is really looking at my identity um, as a person, and at that time specifically as a Native Hawaiian, and really seeing in just in terms of the church I was growing up in, that there wasn't that sense that all of those parts of who I was could really be okay. Uh, I think when I met Mariness, uh, brothers specifically who were my teachers, my instructors, and eventually my mentors, there was this real change in what I had experienced or what I thought um, being a Catholic was. The charism of the Marianist philosophy is centered and focused on egalitarianism, is e equality, uh, treating people as equals and respecting one for just being a decent human being. That is the essence of the Marianist philosophy. As a result, the Marianists um, tend to invite diversity, invite differences in opinions. We have a motto at St. Louis that I learned when I was in high school and continues to today, and that is memor et fidelis ever mindful and faithful to educate a young student's mind, body, and soul. The Mystical Rose Chapel sits on the Diamond Head side of the Kalaipohaku campus. Today, the chapel serves as a place for sharing and bearing witness to the faith of those assembled. Above all, it is a place to redefine and to affirm the future role of the Marianists in Hawaii. We're probably going to be going back to our roots. The numbers of the brothers, the professed religious, both brothers, priests, and sisters, aren't increasing. They're certainly decreasing. But that shouldn't be a sign of death. I think it's a sign of life. It's a metamorphosis going back to where we came from. The Marianist presence here in Hawaii is a great testament to that. Sharing our Marianist history, our family, and our charism doesn't just belong to the brothers and priests, not just to the sisters, but it belongs to all of us. There is an absolute need to really be an agent of change. Um, you know, like Gandhi says, be the change you wish to see in the world. Because it's not only about you. You are also accountable to so many other people and responsible in the role that you play in a community like ours. Recently, the Mystical Rose Chapel served as a gathering place, a retreat for families wishing to strengthen their faith and their Marianist commitment to transforming society by leading humble, exemplary lives. Love one families together to help them renew their spirit, to speak to each other in an area that many families have not developed the ability to speak with each other in terms of the spirit of affirming each other, of forgiving one another, of articulating how we can live out our Christian life as a family is a gift to the families and for us. We're here for a common purpose. Kind of a unity was created. 
And that's been a hallmark of the, of the brothers wherever they've worked, wherever they've worked. And that's what's happening now with the lay people. The lay people are brought into the same family spirit. And we don't really distinguish between who's a, who's a vowed Marianist and who's a lay Marianist. There's no distinction. We're all colleagues working for God, working for the church. The Society of Mary has been an integral part of the history and fabric of Hawaii. The brothers and fathers have toiled in these islands, not in fields or plantations, but as teachers and as religious caring for the spiritual well-being of their communities. The vision of Father Shamanad rings true. Maria Duce. The love between mother and child is the purest love, an unconditional love towards which we all aspire. That love has thrived in the hearts and minds of men, women, and children here in the islands for the past 125 years. And now, with them, through them, the Marianists continue. Oh.